All right, good morning, everyone, uh, or afternoon, depending on where you're logging in from. Uh, my name is Sean Harrison. I am a uh, BI trainer and product expert for Pragmaticworks. And today we're just going to look at a rudimentary introduction to SSIS. Uh, now, for most of my presentations, I usually have uh, somewhat of a PowerPoint presentation, nothing too lengthy, but just a small PowerPoint presentation. Uh, for my introduction to SSIS, uh, presentations that I do. My PowerPoint is incredibly small because I have so much to get through. Uh, and who really wants to stare at PowerPoint anyway? Uh, so just going through uh, an introductory look at SSIS, what it's used for, and how to use it basically. Uh, so first off with SSIS, you know, what exactly is it for? Well, basically the simple answer is mainly just data ETL. It's the extraction, transformation, and loading of data. So it's a replacement for DTS. If you remember from, you know, pre-2005, uh, they had the data transformation services. Uh, but this is its replacement. So it's much faster, more efficient, and it's been around since 2005, so of course it has evolved quite a bit. Uh, now, when working with SSIS and uh, ETL, uh, you're going to be working within the Visual Studio environment. So within BIDS, if you're on 2005 or 2008, or for those of you that are using 2012, they've now decided to change it to SQL Server Data Tools, or SSDT. Not quite as easy or fun to say. Uh, now, when looking at you know, how that's used, you know, how you're using SSDT or BIDS, uh, you know, how you are structuring your, your different BI projects, uh, inside of Visual Studio, you're going to be working with a solution. Uh, a solution is going to hold all the different projects. So you could have SSAS projects, an SSIS project, and an SSRS project. So analysis services, integration services, and reporting services, all inside of one solution. So kind of think about it as kind of like a bucket. And then underneath the project, that's where you're going to have the items that are specific to that project type. So in the case of SSIS, it's going to hold uh, multiple packages. So all of your different SSIS packages, which are basically your units of work. Now, when working with an SSIS package, there are two main parts of the package that you're going to be working with. Uh, first off, you're going to have the control flow. This is going to handle the order of operations or the flow of tasks within the package. So this is going to keep everything running in the specific order that, that you want it. And then you're also going to have the data flow. Now, the data flow, this is where you're going to do all of your ETL. Um, there are certain cases where you might do a little bit of ETL inside the control flow, but not very common. Uh, all the ETL mainly is going to be done inside of the data flow. So this is where you're going to be extracting data from different sources, you know, whether it's from databases, uh, from flat files, you know, whatever you have, uh, doing some sort of transformation, maybe bringing uh, different sources together, making sure their formats match, cleaning up data that's bad, uh, lots of different scenarios there. And then loading it into a destination. All right, so a good short introductory PowerPoint. So now we can move on to actually working inside of Visual Studio uh, with SSIS packages. So what we're going to do is take a look at uh, you know, what you're going to be working with, what you have to work with here, how everything works, and just kind of throw something together so you can see you know, what you can actually do with SSIS. All right, so inside of Visual Studio, which I have uh, open right here, uh, now, also, I should probably mention, I am using uh, SQL Server 2012, uh, and I have Visual Studio 2012 here with SSDT. Uh, you know, you could still be using 2008 or 2008 R2, which is very common, possibly even 2005. Uh, so there are quite a few differences uh, between 2008 R2 and uh, also 2012. Uh, so I will point those out here and there, just in case we do have some people that are specifically using 2008, some that are specifically using 2012, and then others that are possibly in a mixed environment. So I'll just kind of point out a few differences here and there. Uh, but first off, one of the big differences that you're going to notice is that um, they've finally given you ch uh, options to uh, change the interface. So you have these different color themes, which is great because I hate having a white screen blaring at me. So I can switch it to black, so it's nice and gloomy to match my spider-infested cubicle. Uh, now, from the start page, here you're going to have uh, the ability to 
open up recent um, projects, uh, create new projects. So from here, I'm just going to click New Project. And it's going to ask you what kind of project you want. Um, hopefully, for those watching, the black uh, and gray color scheme is uh, hopefully making everything a, a bit more clearer to, to look at. Uh, so here, inside of the different project types, you'll notice that um, you have the different uh, templates. Now, if you have just uh, SSIS installed, so just the, the, you know, when you install SQL Server, you also have um, AS, RS, and IS. Uh, it does install a part of Visual Studio for you, uh, but you only have the business intelligence pieces. For those that have a full-blown install of uh, Visual Studio, you'll have other template types, such as uh, Visual Basic, C Sharp, you know, other types of development projects. So here we just want business intelligence. Uh, you can even choose between analysis, integration, and reporting. Uh, now mine, by default, is uh, uh, set to business intelligence. So if I'm selecting an integration services project, down at the bottom we can give this some sort of a name. So I'll just call it SSIS Webinar. By default, it's going to put it inside your documents folder, which is fine for me. I really don't care. You also have the solution name. Now when you name your project, by default, it's going to give the solution the same name. Uh, which, you know, that's fine as well. Uh, the only time that you may really have to change the solution name is if you are incorporating different project types. Say you have an SSIS project and also a reporting services project that you plan on putting into the same solution. So I'm just going to leave the solution name the way it is. It doesn't really matter to me right now. All right, and just click OK. So this creates the project for me and opens it up right here in, uh, inside of SSDT. Uh, so a few different parts that you're going to be working with. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is give you a little bit of a rundown of the environment, just in case you haven't really used SSIS that much, uh, so you can get a better understanding of what you have in the environment, what to work with, and what everything's going to do for you. Also, I can point out some of the differences between 2008 uh, in 2012. So everything before 2012 and then what we have now in 2012. Um, first off, we have the Solution Explorer. This is going to list all of your different projects underneath your solution and everything you have inside of the projects. Uh, now, by default, you'll see I have my solution name here, but by default, that solution name isn't shown there. Typically, it's only going to show you all of the, uh, you know, just the project names. So like in this case, it would normally show by default SSIS underscore webinar as my project. Uh, 